And welcome from Caravan Salon. I'm going to turn the camera around. Uh, as you can see, oops, not that one. There you go. That's that's better, isn't it? So uh, this is live broadcast. Today's live broadcast coming from Caravan Salon, and this is the Heimer stand here. Now uh, I'll walk around. I don't think we get into many vehicles, but if I get the chance, I'll nip in quickly and uh, do some filming. So uh, being a live broadcast, please keep the language uh, appropriate uh, because I can only. Uh, ban somebody if this somebody says something uh, a bit rude or something like that I don't have the opportunities as I do uh, for um, cleaning language up hello autodome and uh, <laughs> and anyway so uh, we've got inside a vehicle already uh, this oh, it's the no, I didn't even look at what it is. Okay, it was, it's a camper van anyway. You can see it's a camper van. And so we've got the bed here at the back. I'll show you one of the features of the features though, because it's a six meter camper van. Uh, there you go, look at that big toilet. Absolutely amazing toilet. Absolutely fantastic. Look at all that space it's got inside. Uh, up front, uh, right, so there's a tent in the roof. Nice to see you too. Where are you? <laughs> and there we have the space in the tent in the roof look at all that space there and uh, also Fiat Ducato camper van but what I really like is the uh, the space it gives under the bed you've got something which is obviously at a Heimer quality uh, uh, um, vehicle uh, we've got and uh, notice how the bed is sort of bigger at one end and it's smaller at the other so it's contoured around the shape of the washroom and uh, fridge here two burners and a sink that's absolutely normal hello sorry what's this hello uh, harry asks me please look at the heimer crossover 4x4 watching from Angers, france okay let's go <laughs> have a look at the i think well oh sorry no the crossover is not here it's um it's in a different uh, it's in a different hall uh, because I also thought it was a Heimer crossover, but apparently it's a Deathless crossover. I filmed it yesterday, uh, but I'll do a live from there uh, on another day if that sounds okay. So, this is the free 600, and um, one little feature here this is a little feature, but it's quite a nice one is you've got this space here in front of the gas cabinet, which you don't have to get into all the time, and it's a bit of a space here, and this bit of space here is for your uh, deck chairs, there's the Heimer deck chairs and there's the Heimer outdoor table and, and that goes in here. Uh, and so I think that's, a, it, it's only a small thing, but I think that's a quite a nice little touch. Uh, right, uh, I've forgotten, where, where, where was I going? Let's come around here. So, we've got Exus here 474, which I think is one of the uh, shortest uh, vehicles. Uh, uh, right, yes, I also thought Crossover was the Heimer brand, but it's not, it's the, uh, it's the Deathless brand. <laughs> so, got a, not a huge amount of uh, standing space, well no, it's, it's perfectly adequate for me, but uh, this is, I think this vehicle's about six and a half metres, something like that. Uh, German layout at the back. Now, I, um, I really do like the Heimer style, the way they do things. And uh, uh, this uh, here can make an even bigger bed as it is at the moment. We've got stored. Oh, it's broken. Look at that. Somebody's broke. Some somebody's pinched the end of the uh, 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 thing. <laughs> Storage under the bed. Lots of it as well. And you don't even have to open it there. So if somebody comes and pinches you at the end of your uh, your, your um, button there, you can just lift it up like that instead. Get in like that. Uh, on this side, there's not so much storage. A bit less. Uh, nice big washroom. I'm now living in a Heimer vehicle, and uh, and I certainly appreciate it. Um, but one thing here, note: the floor isn't flat, and that is that's a bit of a problem. So you've got to go up market a bit to get a flat floor. Uh, so we'll go up market a bit. Now this is the Exis I four three four can't give you the price it, this thing here the MLT 580 is a new vehicle oh yeah okay right you want to see the venture design okay right well if we can get in I can show it to you if we can't get in 
then I can't show it to you. So this uh, is a new vehicle for 2024. Uh, uh, and I can see it's packed out inside. They've got two of them here though, so we'll see if we can get into the other one. Um, this uh, vehicle, the MLT used to be my favorite van, but I've sort of, it's sort of uh, gone down on my favorites list, but still, I mean, it's still a very nice vehicle. Uh, don't deny that. There you go, seven meter long van. Look at there's the price, 170,000 euros. Uh, wow, so I mean, and oh, oh, this is the one you wanted. Okay, right, okay, good. So, to, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get into it a bit later. Uh, there's one over here as well, but that seems there's, oh, there's a cute, there's a cute to get in that one, and uh, don't think we're gonna get in either, I'm afraid. Uh, not for the want of trying. Here we have the Grand Canyon S. Now the Grand Canyon comes on both the Fiat and the uh, Mercedes uh, platform. Uh, this is 593. Uh, centimeters long the new electric system what new electric system can you be more specific please because the, uh, uh, do you mean to s the new I didn't is there a new electric system in Heimer vans that I don't know about or do you mean uh, uh, another type of electric system <laughs> there you see the uh, tent in the roof uh, windows as you always get mind you this tent in the roof isn't uh, it isn't as good as the one in the the Venture S that really is a excellent t uh, tent in the roof. Uh, let's come to the back here because it is for a small vehicle. It is it isn't badly kicked out as you'd expect. This in the MLT, right? Okay. If I can get in it, I'll do it. If not, I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until I have a one on the in the evening to do. This is a flare. So it's been extend. The wall's been extended. I learnt the word in American English for flare. Uh, three days ago and I've forgotten it. Pod, that's it. It's called a pod in, 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 in US English. So there's the pod and uh, there's a fridge and nice kitchen block and let's come out around here. They have this uh, folding table. I met, um, uh, met some people a couple of years ago with an MLT and they cut their table in two, two, so it was like this size. For me, I must have a big table, but I do appreciate that not everybody wants a big table. Um, so it's got a number of vans, as you can see, it's based, camper vans, I should say, based on both the Fiat and the Mercedes. And uh, there you go, there's the Grand Canyon S, S, which we've just seen, but this one's in a different color right uh, so uh, here we have some Ariba caravans now I think Ariba was the first company that was acquired by Haima as I understand it so these old caravans uh, look like something out of the 1960s uh, you need to have the pop top open if you're not really short but I, I like I like the uh, retro color schemes on them now, okay, let's see if I can get into one of these ML. Oh, hey, I might, there's nobody here. Right, I'm racing down here to get into this MLT 580. Look at that, how about that for speed and there's somebody inside. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll go in anyway. Right, you're gonna have to direct me to where the electric system is that you want to see. Right, so this is the new MLT 580. Yeah, it's got a funny light here. Right. Television at the back. I feel we're not going to get any further. Let's come out, sorry. We can, however, see the uh, the rear of it. I'll have, to, I'll have to do it some other time. It's not the sort of thing to do with the live broadcast, obviously. Hey, we'll have a look at this one here. There's BMCT 550. It's seven meters long. And uh, the B class has been on the go since 1981, but it, what, they started to revive it around 2018. And so here we have a integrated uh, B class 6i600, which is 700, 719 centimeters in length. And uh, not getting in that one. Might get in this one though. 
Uh, no, we're not getting that one either. Don't get in any of them by the looks of things. And the um, Hymer said that they weren't going to do all these fairs. They were going to do one fair every other year. This is what they said in 2000 during uh, COVID. And so they were supposed to turn it in 2021, but obviously the COVID put them off in that year. So uh, from doing one every other year, two years they didn't do anything, and then now they've clearly changed their minds and they're going to do every year. Why? Because I think they're having difficulty selling. And uh, so the result is that uh, Heimer will be at events like this. Now, it did have the best hall in Dusseldorf, at least I think was the best hall. Now it's got one which is to the back, more difficult to find. It lost its hall. Now, the Messe Dusseldorf, the Dusseldorf Trade Fair, kept its good hall for it in 2020, but for 2021, clearly they uh, decided against it and uh, so Heimer lost it. This is the 580. It's a seven meter long vehicle, 719 centimeters if I remember rightly. And this is very nice as well. Mind you, it's not as nice as mine, in my opinion. Uh, lots of people ask me, what motorhome should I buy? So I will say this, get one with a double floor. You can see all this storage you've got in the double floor down here. And that's a very important thing, I think. Uh, get one with good insulation. I'm insulation is good. I've used it in the dead of winter uh, when it's been down to minus 17. That's not my record in the van. My record is minus 22, which I did in my own vehicle. Or my foot, my last vehicle, I should say, uh, in Poland in uh, 2021. Um, and I, I believe get one which has the sleeping arrangements which you like the best. So if you want something like this, for example, you've got this, this German layout, two singles which join up. If you want an enormous bed, get something like this. If you're happier with a uh, width-wise bed, get something like that. There's fewer companies actually manufacturing now the width-wise bed. It's like people want to have this uh, version more than anything else or the queen bed version, both of which incidentally take up more space in the vehicle so the most space efficient well it's probably the most space efficient is a vehicle with a drop down bed and the rest of it is a lounge or something like that but in a fixed bed version the most space efficient is the width wise bed it also has the advantage of giving you a nice uh, garage as well this is a very nice garage but not all german layouts give you that this this enormous garage at the back that we see here all right let's have a bit more wonder uh, this is um, these on oh, here uh, the semi integrated on a mercedes t680 modern comfort 739 centimeters long uh, we can get in here and have a look at this one another semi integrated vehicle on a uh, mercedes and there we go, uh, stick the camera around, I can't hang around too late long here because it's got music on. If somebody puts music on, it's not worth the risk as far as I'm concerned, being done on a copyright claim. Uh, one of the problems is, is with, uh, I noticed lots of company want to start offering extra beds. This is, I think, a kit that do an extra bed with, okay, these are cushions for something something else but when you've got these extra beds it comes with all sorts of mattresses and bits of wood and uh, other things which take up a lot of space in your van now if you've got a big space like in the back like this then it doesn't make much difference but when i see these extra beds being offered in um, 540 centimeter long vehicles i think it's a bit daft um, that's why i am really really keen to push the idea of the air filled mattress one you can get I have got a mattress which I carry on my backpack when I'm uh, going to places um, uh, well, such as Ukraine uh, and carry a sleeping bag as well and I've now got a hydraulic pump as well so I don't even have to blow the thing up myself it takes up a very small uh, amount of space and that is certain amount of space 
uh, in, a, in a motorhome, you won't even notice it. But with lugging around mattresses and things, you certainly will. At the top of the Heimer uh, uh, brand, um, three <laughs> motorhomes, family of motorhomes, is this thing here. Uh, this here, B-Class MLI 880. There's another one, 890. One's got a queen bed. The one's got a German layout, but it's the, more or less the same length. And uh, obviously at the back, it's a bit different. It uh, comes on a tag axle. That's two, two wheels like here. Well, it's got two wheels the other side as well, and, and two up front. Uh, so it's got uh, six wheels in total. Um, but, and it also comes with a, a, a normal axle at the rear as well. We'll have to see that in a different video, I'm afraid. So we're not getting in. Uh, this character here, the Adventure S, brought out as a concept in um, 2019, I think it was. And now it is, uh, it was brought out uh, as in mass production. Or mass production, I don't know if it's the right word. It's, okay, regular production, put it that way, uh, last year. Uh, it's the, the, the tent in the roof is made by a company called Exclu, or rather the uh, sides of it. It's, it's air, but it's my way of thinking. It's an absolutely brilliant product because it is it really, it's very warm, something like that. It's very easy to insulate that, that tent. This material is also used in the Burstner Gallery, and I've actually done uh, other sort of videos on this from here explaining how it could be integrated into things such as VW campers. Uh, I, th I think the product is brilliant. What happens if it gets punctured? It's a double chamber. So if it gets punctured, then what will happen is that uh, you won't be able to raise it. You have to fix it, but you will be able to bring it down and it'll stay up. Uh, now the puncture, there's a puncture kit and the puncture kit works uh, like it does with a bicycle, um, for those of you who can remember fixing inner tubes, now I just take it to somebody, but as a child I had to fix it myself. And uh, so you just clean around it uh, where the puncture is and put on a plaster. Uh, or, or so it comes with a special plaster, it's not any plaster. Uh, as you did with the bicycle, you've got a sort of special plaster to actually stick over it. And uh, right, sorry, so MLT in the driver's door outside. Right, okay, the electrical system. I'll have a, I'll have a look at it. This in the, got the electrical system also in the driver's door. I think you mean inside, not outside. Uh, anyway, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna get inside this. The thing about this though, it's, it, it's, it's a, it looks really attractive, but it's totally impractical, it's not. Uh, I think this is something you have on your, on your drive to impress the neighbors. Uh, it's, it's very nice, but it's not much. Not much uh, use as a, for hardcore campers. Anyway, got next to nowhere to store, store stuff. And uh, it's a bit of a sort of a lounge, a real lounge on wheels uh, more than anything else. Right, okay. Let's see if we now we can actually get it. Is this what you want to see in the electrical uh, setup? Because this is the, this is the 580. Uh, this is the driver's door. And this here is the electrical setup. The um, thing is, I, can't, I can only show it to you and I can't explain it to you because I haven't read the stuff that Heimer actually produced. But is this what you wanted to see? There you go. Uh, I wish I, I can't explain it, so I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, but I can't say what's what as far as this is concerned. And I still can't, still can't, still can't get into it. Um, I'll read up on the electrical stuff, and then I'll be able to say in a uh, future uh, video, give a, a bit of a description about what's there. Hey, I'll take you around the rest of the hall now. We'll have a. Oh, hey, might get in here if I'm quick. If I'm quick, if I'm really quick, if I'm racing, race in ahead. No, there's somebody in there. Can't get in. Never mind. Let's uh, uh, let's come out out here, and I'll show you the rest of the hall. Now we see ahead of us down here. There's empty space. That is the first time I've actually noticed this at uh, this event. 
uh, and so much empty space and the uh, I don't know the reason for it maybe maybe they didn't have enough vehicles or maybe someone else was supposed to come they didn't come here we've got L LMC uh, which is a, a brand which is owned by Heimer and uh, on the right we've got some camper vans by LMC uh, using the Ford base I think the Ford uh, base is really good the new Ford Transit is super light to drive and but what it really does is it gives so much space inside because it's higher than the Fiat got a stack of space up there and uh, so I'm standing up in here now I think I think the clear clearance is two meters oh this is be about what two two ten or something huge amount of space really good and I think this van is um, I think it's a very attractive camper van Lo the, to drive if you can take the transit out on a test drive it is it is really super super light it's like driving a, a little car well I haven't driven a little car in some time so it was like I remember driving a little car Okay, so uh, more LMC stuff down the left-hand side here. I've got Leica here, and um, Leica is an Italian brand, also owned by the the Heimer Group. I think it's a, it, it is somewhat a, attractive uh, as um, it's got an Italian flair to it. Okay, it's a bit like Mobile Vetta Design, which of course is owned by a different company, Chigano. Uh, only I think like like is much better quality than uh, Trigano. However, this year it's gone for this colour scheme. Here you've got green and brown. Uh, I think that looks awful. Uh, that's my opinion. I mean, I mean, I don't know anything about style, but uh, I certainly wouldn't be walking around with a green and brown suit on, for example. Yeah, I'll take you to the back. Now, the fact that this is uh, called Leica and not Heimer, uh, it doesn't mean to say that the parts the which are in it are not uh, actually the same as in the Heimer van. So the uh, the technology is largely the same. Now the Heimer group doesn't copy as much of each other's brands as much as the uh, Trigano does. So it's in fact in Trigano you can't tell the difference between Chausson and um, Challenger. You didn't know except for the badge on the front. Uh, with this, the, 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 these vehicles do have uh, their own distinctive look. Here's Etrusco, for example, which is uh, placed at the same sort of level as um, Carrado or Sunlight. Uh, but I think you can just about tell the difference between the two. Uh, Etrusco is a cheaper uh, brand uh, of Heimer. But the thing is that these days nothing's cheap. This thing here is going to cost 60,000 euros, which, um, to be quite honest, this is one of the cheapest vehicles here. I don't mean just on the Heimer, but I mean of any uh, um, any any company here in at Dusseldorf. So we've got the the uh, that's a wardrobe up there. I did the same thing in my van. Uh, to have them put the wardrobe up there. So this is very, very, very basic. Uh, very, very basic. He says here there's a soft, soft close system. Let's give it a test. Yeah. It's like a bank. Oh, hang on, Let's see if that works. Yeah. That's not soft close, is it? Didn't close. That's a that's a non that's that's a sort of closed system. So, um, Etrusco is based on the Ford and the Fiat, and uh, it was just based on the Fiat, but I think I've had problems uh, getting Fiats, so I started using the Fords. Uh, there's now a shortage of Fords transits on the market. And, oh, come over here, because so over here there's a vehicle, and it says, new chassis. And that one there is a Renault. So the Renault is uh, more easily available 
than Ford and Fiat at present. There we are, some Etrusco camper vans down here. And uh, I shall take you down here. There's some, some Lycas. I, my favorite brand, I think, is um, Cartago. But I think, um, if I, in second place, I put Hymer. And third, I put Lyca. I think. I don't know. Here's Niesman Bischoff. Um, I'll take you into the news. This is the elite of the Heimer group, if you like. Group note. Um, so it was a company that was acquired by Heimer I don't know, about 25 years ago, something like that. Um, I, I'd really like to get a classic Niesman Bischoff, and I almost bought one, but I left the deposit on it. And the uh, thing was, it was so wide, I couldn't drive it. And yeah, it was really, it had been like 170 euros, sorry, 170,000 euros originally. Uh, it was uh, 13 or 14 years old. But anyway, it was so big, I couldn't actually drive it. But it's a really nice looking vehicle. And this one here is the iSmove, which is really super attractive inside. This is, for me, it is the most attractive internally a laid out motorhome but if you saw the video I did on it it's not it, there's so many problems with it and uh, problems which not these aren't problems which I think will get sorted out in time I think this it, it it's such a pity because it's really so attractive uh, anyway there you go there's another ice move this has got a different uh, layout at the back and uh, there's a rather large and attractive Niesman Bishop flare. Now coming over here, these, this is Burstner, and here's some cars. <laughs> the copper, mind you, one of these coppers isn't a car, it's a camper van, because it's got a toilet in the back, and that's how I decide what the difference between a camper van and a car is a car doesn't have a toilet. Uh, it, I suppose it could be a car and with a toilet if it didn't have a bed, uh, but the, thing, the big thing is, it must have, as far as I'm concerned, a toilet and somewhere to wash yourself in. Now, uh, this here is called a Habiton, and this is effectively a car. <laughs> and this is, a, it's only a project, or maybe it's a prototype, I don't know. But uh, it is the smallest one in the market. But what is clever about this is that the roof, itself when it lifts up it makes the the tent inside so the tent a part of the tent is the uh, is the roof of the vehicle uh, I just mentioned it alpaca camping is a way of uh, uh, going out, sleeping out uh, um, at farmers and things like a bit like uh, Fonds Passion, I suppose and they've got it says now 4,000 uh, places to stop so, Burstner vans here, which I showed is the first thing I did from Camper Van Salon. I've taken you around this hall, this is hall number six. There are 17 halls, I think it is. So I'm obviously not going to get around all of them uh, in the time that I've got the, the 10 days uh, being here. Uh, at Caravan Salon. This for me though, I just met somebody who said that uh, he recognized me and he said he, oh, he came here from Canada because of me. And I thought that was really wonderful. I don't know if it was true, but I thought it was really nice that he actually said so. Uh, I really appreciated that one. Here we'll have a look at this, this uh, smart living in luxury class. Uh, this is the top of the range from from Bosnia, 200,000 or thereabouts for something like that. Okay, good. So I'm going to take you back to uh, Heimer uh, stand, Heimer brand, and uh, which is over here. Oh, incidentally, amount of people who are here. I mean, it does seem like there's a lot. I can't get in the vehicles when I want to get in them, but it does seem to me as though numbers are down and I can explain this I think because for economics 
uh, people don't have the cash available for purchases and what will be affected in times of recession is the market at the bottom end because at the top end people can afford a quarter of a million or half a million or whatever they'll still be able to afford it but people who need to buy something on credit are much less likely to make a purchase and that uh, is the uh, that's where it'll be. Uh, the recession will, above all, be felt. So it's like the likes of uh, Roller Team, for example, will be far worse hit than Niesman Bischoff. Okay, there you go. So I'm coming back here to end this uh, little tour. Uh, at uh, what I wanted to show you, uh, the new Heimer MLT. I don't know if I can sort of stand it and get it a bit closer in. There you go. There's the electric bit. That the show, the show <laughs> uh, uh, below, and uh, which I failed to actually explain to you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, tonight I've got a video on uh, the top, top of the range from Canals, and as you probably possibly know, I don't recommend Canals as a as a manufacturer, but I do show their vans, so nobody can call, accuse me of being biased. Uh, and uh, but anyway. So that'll be at 21.15 Central European time this evening, uh, 20.15 in the UK and all sorts of times in other places. But for the moment, thank you very much for watching this uh, and it's, uh, I'll try and do more of these live chats. Uh, I'm trying to film as much as I can as well whilst I'm here. So all the best from me in Germany. Thanks for watching. Oh, there's somebody else looking, taking interest in the electrical system, which I failed to explain. Thanks and all the best. Bye for now. Mm.